This video is brought to you by AG1. Stick around to hear more about the special offer they're providing to the entire upper echelon community. All right, everyone saw the title. This is Parrot Analytics, and Parrot Analytics is destroying your entertainment. Dramatic, over the top, grossly exaggerated, maybe all three, but I'm going to let the audience decide for themselves. Feel free to let me know your thoughts on whether or not this qualifies as clickbait down below in the comment section after you've seen the video. What is Parrot Analytics? Simply put, in their own words, it's a global industry insights company that provides supply and demand analytics for entertainment content. Now, that's a bit of a technical description, so for the sake of clarity, Parrot Analytics is a company that measures how popular any given show is, relaying that information to creators who then make production decisions about where to go next. If Parrot comes back and shows that a television program or a streaming series is extremely popular by their estimation, something like Amazon or HBO will read into that and make budgetary calls, project decisions, or other adjustments to shift the direction of their output. Positive or negative, the metrics being given by Parrot Analytics are a key component of entertainment decision making, and therein lies the problem. According to Parrot Analytics, well, I'll just show you. For copyright reasons, I can't play the whole thing outright, but I'll link it down below for those who are interested. According to Parrot Analytics, quote, the way we make our biggest decisions, the evaluation and monetization of our prized content hasn't changed in over 70 years, but entertainment has evolved. Later on, it continues, quote, it captures our attention in different ways now. It's diverse with fan bases all over the world. The old approach just doesn't cut it anymore, end quote. That's a pretty dramatic shift if you think about it. Remember, Parrot Analytics is partnered with Prime Video, Disney+, Plus, HBO, Google, Meta, Stars, Discovery, Warner Media, and even one of the largest Hollywood agencies in existence, CAA. Parrot Analytics is woven into the very fabric of Hollywood entertainment, but it's not a guiding light that shines brightly in the darkness. It's a corrosive and misguided entity that appears to be the driving force behind a near total degradation of American-made cinematic entertainment. Let's complete the picture. Drawing again from Parrot's promotional material, quote, what if you could track and measure what audiences are searching for across the globe? What if you combine that with what they are streaming and downloading, and capture what they're discussing with their friends online? These days, you are competing in the consumer attention economy. Only Parrot Analytics provides answers to the questions asked across the entire content lifecycle. There's more, like how Parrot supposedly invented global demand measurement, or how the analytics they provide help companies decide what stories get the green light, but the gist of it is that Parrot Analytics is the architect of a new system evaluating content demand of sorts, which is being exported to practically all major streaming services and production studios across the world. Pretty substantial. And now, a product. This is AG1. AG1 has nutrients. You need nutrients. Therefore, you need AG1. Logic. In all seriousness, I actually like it. It doesn't really taste like much, it smells good though, and it supports immunity by being healthy, I guess. It's an all-in-one foundational nutrition drink, is the best way to describe it, and it's also great for athletes who play sports, or sports. Everyone likes it, and I'm supposed to call it a daily micro-habit, I think. Somebody in marketing was probably thrilled with themselves for coming up with that, I bet, but the truth is, the ingredients list is solid. Vitamin K12, manganese, vitamin B12, B5, B6, zinc, magnesium, etc., etc. I looked at them myself, I did, looked at how they interact with the human body, and it really is a solid drink. Certified by the NSF, created for professional athletes, I can feel my brain cells rubbing against each other like teenagers at a club. All seven of them. The biggest thing I really do like is that AG1 contains particular ingredients such as alpha-lipoic acid and ashwagandha, which can help with sleep, stress, and anxiety because anxiety sucks and no one wants to have it. I didn't really expect to enjoy it and start drinking it. It was kind of just a sponsor to me when they first contacted me. I'm just going to level with you, but I do drink it now. I actually do consume this beverage myself, and they've been an incredible partner thus far. If you click the link down below, you can get a free one-year supply of immunosupporting vitamin D3K12, I think it is, and five travel packs for free with your first purchase. I'm supposed to say, you can't put a price on your own health, but I'm not saying that. It's called healthcare. We put a price on it every single day. This just happens to be a much more reasonable price and a quality product that I actually do enjoy and find value in. Again, link down below with a bonus. Big thank you to AG1 for sponsoring the channel. So where's the problem? Parrot Analytics is a main stage industry player, but why does it even matter? Well, the problem is right here, and it matters because, well, that'll be clear soon. In their white paper, we can see a clear as day articulation that Parrot Analytics will define demand by usage of the following metrics, consumption data, research, social media, and social video activity, which they use to determine the cross-platform demand for content and talent. That's a fancy way of saying, we don't look just at the raw viewership numbers to determine what's popular, we look at social media activity as well. That's all well and good, but let's use an example. This is Rings of Power. 
Some of you may remember I hated this show. It's garbage, but let's just use some math here to demonstrate what's really happening behind the scenes with Parrot Analytics. Rings of Power launched in September of 2022. Episodes 1 and 2 came out initially, then one per week till mid-October. Easy enough. According to archived Nielsen data from RatingsRyan.com, we can see that during its initial debut, Rings of Power had a staggering 1.2 billion minutes of watch time. That is undeniably popular, no questions asked. But what happened after? Well, according to CBR, quote, Demand for Lord of the Rings Rings of Power only spiked after the season finale. According to new reports, Prime Video's Lord of the Rings Rings of Power saw a staggering all-time high in demand after the season one finale. End quote. That sounds good. Really, really good. But let's keep going. Quote, as reported by The Wrap, which absolutely did echo this article in almost every conceivable way, the show spiked in viewership a whopping 55.7 times after season one's finale aired on October 14th according to data collected by Parrot Analytics, which looks at a variety of engagement from consumers, including research, streaming, downloads, and social media. This is a much higher number than any other streaming report for the season. End quote. Still with me? Good. Rings of Power, immediately popular, after the season ends, supposedly, it has a huge explosion of popularity, or demand, rather, according to Parrot Analytics, which the media regurgitates to the masses almost like, go figure, a parrot. Corroborating this, we have data for the entire month of October, which is the full window on and around the time frame where Rings of Power concluded, where we see it rise in the demand rankings for Parrot Analytics right here, and then subsequently fall off completely. Pretty straightforward. What isn't straightforward is that if you actually look at relative watch time, the picture dramatically changes. According to raw Nielsen watch time data, which is, as we established at the beginning, a long-standing industry paradigm, Rings of Power debuted at 1.2 some odd billion minutes. The following week, 1.2 again, then just shy of a billion, just shy of a billion again, and again, and again, until the week ending October 16th, which includes the series finale, where it jumps back up to 1.1 billion minutes, and then craters down to 570 million the following week. After that, it's gone from the top 10 completely. There is not, objectively and verifiably, a 55.7 times increase after the season finale aired. It didn't happen, period. How then is it possible to have media outlets echoing a stone-cold analytical lie about viewership for Rings of Power? That's the question, and it's a question we've kind of already answered. Demand. Demand, as we've established on the part of Parrot Analytics, encompasses social media activity regarding the show. Engagements, mentions, and posting, as well as creator activity and a series of other considerations that simply have nothing to do with actual viewership enjoyment, watch time, or enthusiasm. Rings of Power was a popular show by any objective measurement conceivable because it rode the coattails of the Tolkien properties, but it did not have a 55.7x spike in viewership. It did not happen. How about another example? This is Velma. Velma was a massively controversial television program, another one I fucking hated, debuting in January of 2023. According to Parrot Analytics, Velma powered through the criticism to take second position in the ranking, which is mostly true by their standards, where Velma supposedly had 37.3 times more demand than the average online original series, which is impressive. Velma finished airing its first season in early February, and at no point in its entire lifespan did the production get even close to 300 million minutes of watch time in a single weekly period. Now, that's partly because it's a shorter program, which is understandable. There's less material to watch, therefore the metric might be imperfect as a baseline measurement, but let me round out the picture fully here. Velma is a short but terrible comedy show that began airing in January of 2023, currently has one season on the books, and never once crossed into the top 10 for actual viewership in a single weekly period ever, never even approaching 300 million minutes of watch time, but That 90s Show, a new spin-off with just one season so far, originally predicated on That 70s Show, airing in January of 2023, just like Velma, is the precise opposite. That 90s show, a Netflix original released under their typical framework of dropping everything all at once, landed at number two for Nielsen data with nearly 1.6 billion minutes watched in the first week alone for a 21-minute episode-length comedy. This is, of course, dramatically skewed since the episodes all came out at once, but hear me out. The following week, it had nearly a billion minutes of watch time, the week after, 340 million, and it wasn't until a month later that it dropped out of the top 10 completely. Parrot Analytics classifies that 90s show as being 4.6 times more popular than average shows in the US during the past 30 days, with a ranking of good, which may sound fine, but also makes no sense. 
Collectively, in its runtime, if we only assume that it got the visible metrics from its three appearances on the top 10 chart, which is an extreme low ball since it obviously continues to gain millions and millions more minutes of watch time to this day, that 90 show stands at roughly 2.9 billion minutes of watch time collectively. That's 10 episodes, 2. Point billion minutes. What about Velma? Velma, even if we assume that it was number 11, just barely outside the top 10 for shows its entire season one runtime, a generous overestimation, by the way, could only have achieved a maximum 1 billion minutes in watch time. These numbers are achieved by assuming that Velma barely missed the top 10 ranking every single week in the first season, and that Netflix's That 90s Show only achieved the listed metrics and nothing beyond that in its fourth week or ever beyond again. Basically, as generous as humanly possible in favor of Velma. Even with that generosity, Velma barely cracks one third of the actual eyes on human watch time. And yet, as media praises the show for ascending the steps of popularity in the face of all odds, Parrot Analytics decides that Velma is 12.5 times more popular than the market average recently. AKA, if we distill this down to the core issue, a show that doesn't even have a third of the watch time in totality is classified as nearly three times more popular by Parrot Analytics. How is that possible? Just to frame it a little bit differently here for anyone that that may help, imagine if I made a YouTube video that got 100,000 minutes of watch time, which is not uncommon by the way, that's actually pretty small, and also happened to have the worst like to dislike ratio in my entire content library with everyone openly shitting on me across all of social media. Now imagine I made another entirely separate video on YouTube that got almost 300,000 minutes of watch time, triple the one from before, with a fairly positive like to dislike ratio, and hardly anyone is ripping on me publicly. In fact, people like it a great deal. They just watch it and happily go back to their day waiting for more. Which one has higher demand? According to anyone who's even remotely rational here, the 300,000 minute watch time video with fairly positive reviews and discourse is wildly more successful than the 100,000 minute watch time fiasco that made me a laughing stock. But according to Parrot Analytics, no. Velma is supposedly more successful and more in demand than that 90s show, despite being an objective disaster. That's what we're dealing with. To really hammer it home from a media perspective, here's the kind of titles we're dealing with, because Parrot Analytics is feeding this new demand metric right into the minds of Hollywood and media. Quote, Velma's popularity spikes by 127% despite overwhelming negative reviews. <laughs> wow, that's a lot. But if the popularity spiked by 127% and it still doesn't even crack the top 10 on Nielsen, that means it probably only got about half a billion minutes of watch time. During the same weekly period where this headline came out, this headline being a direct citation of Parrot Analytics by name, which is just further demonstrating that the media and Hollywood are absolutely taking this company seriously, Velma yet again failed to even break into the top 10 on the Nielsen charts, aka a 127% spike in demand didn't even put it on the traditional map. Why are we seeing this happen? Because Parrot Analytics makes no sense. According to their help center, these are the weighted criteria for quantifying demand ranked from most to least impactful. Creative participation, active consumption, deep research, social encouragement, public posting, expressing an opinion, subscribing to updates, indicating interest, passive impressions. That's the list. For starters, it's word soup, but things get worse quickly. The fact that they are very clearly incorporating social media traffic into basically the entirety of their middle metrics mean that a large wave of users openly criticizing the show, even if they've never watched it a day in their life, legitimately hate it and never supported the company or never will again, can theoretically be counted as demand. Not even theoretically. It is being counted as demand. I would argue it must be counted heavily in some capacity. How else can you end up with blatantly falsified numerical claims? But for the real kicker, let's remember that my recent projects were exploring an enormous social media bot network, spanning multiple industries, where those bots are now being tied into large language models to simulate human posting and engagement. Millions of accounts directed into behavior patterns by machine learning can be spun up and pointed at practically anything from politics to crypto and beyond. Now imagine that you have two identical shows. One of them is good and popular. One of them is terrible and offensive. Now imagine that an enormous social media bot network can be used to spike the demand for one of those shows, big air quotes there, demand, on social media by fabricating public posts and social encouragement, or discouragement in this case, 
while directing a list of bot accounts to subscribe for updates or follow the showrunners or express an opinion or any number of additional actions that qualify as demand under the current criteria list. What happens? Simple answer, the show then appears to be more popular if measured by a company such as Parrot Analytics with their current criteria. We've already shown the proof, but this pattern is borne out across a multitude of current examples. Batwoman, Gotham Knights, She-Hulk, Miss Marvel, and the list goes on. Deeply unpopular shows with objectively horrible viewership numbers and watch time are being called breakout hits and sold as 35 times more successful than average programs, while simultaneously failing to even rank on critical metrics, which is basically the most extreme way imaginable of embracing the all press is good press mantra. The truth is not all press is good. If you have 10 million people who hate your program and hate you for it, viewing it as nothing more than an offensive degradation of childhood nostalgia, who then complain about it on social media relentlessly, that doesn't actually mean that demand for the show is high. With absolute seriousness here, I believe that less than $10,000 of scripted bot network activity under the current pricing model of auto GPT agents and their open AI API costs, which I have now extensively used, directed at the proper social communities could measurably change the output of Parrot Analytics. I'm not kidding, it actually could. Maybe that will be another project I try to pull off someday, buy a bunch of bot traffic, spam a certain community, and watch the demand rank for a horrible television program continually soar in the face of all sanity. But right now I have some other things on the agenda, and I'm mostly just sad that a company like this has managed to become so integrated into the world of entertainment. Think about it, and I know I'm kind of kicking a dead horse by repeating myself here, but really think about it. One of the largest and most successful data analytics firms that helps entertainment companies pick and choose what shows to actually make has decided that measuring social media posts is somehow a useful thing to do. And maybe it is, in a perfect world with a better cohesive system. Maybe. But that company is now telling production studios what is and is not successful, or rather, in demand, by feeding them a crock of shit where a pure, unmitigated, and holistically unuseful set of criteria are being considered, which leads to terrible, low interest, and needlessly controversial shows getting rated as industry frontrunners, breakout hits, and brave success stories. That is a downward spiral. Media outlets quite obviously republish whatever they see from Parrot Analytics, the examples are everywhere and we've already showed some of them today, which leaves us with a growing number of shows that are garbage, where people criticize them publicly for being garbage, and then that criticism, stating that the show is garbage, is incorporated into demand metrics as proof of why the show is actually not garbage, rather popular and successful. It's like a twisted, bizarro, opposites day world where nothing makes sense because up is down, happy is sad, and terrible is popular. Hopefully people can wake up to this. In the end, we're really only just starting to see the visible ramifications of it all. Social media authenticity is a highway to hell, and yet now we are using it as a critical portion of what television shows to make which means that basically anyone with a few thousand dollars and a laptop can start to weigh in, impactfully I might add, and directly influencing what programs are or are not renewed. I guess I should be happy. Theoretically now, I have so much more influence over the process than just one single watcher, myself, like looking at the show, because I know how to seek out and hire bot networks. Obviously that's not really a good thing and I'll never do it, but here we are. Parrot Analytics is the company actively destroying your entertainment. You know what, let's actually demonstrate this. Um, I don't know, the video wouldn't be complete without it, so let's do it. Huge shout out to Shino, again, for helping me repeatedly troubleshoot over and over and pushing the bleeding edge of this stuff to get things up and running. Here's what we did. This right here is the cutting edge of auto GPT agents. And having perfected the integration to allow direct linkage to social media, in particular Twitter for this example, with a custom search engine, among other things, a bunch of APIs integrated, a whole lot went into this. It can now perform autonomous actions on Twitter. I scrubbed my research account, my own personal one, in preparation for this, and I'll probably get banned eventually as a result of doing these kinds of things, but that's fine. Everything you see here right now was posted by an autonomous GPT agent that was built to be a Velma TV show contrarian. It can simply exist on Twitter, scrolling, reading, and posting with contrarian points of view to dramatically spike the engagement for Velma, which in turn, as we've now established, is part of the demand metric used by Parrot Analytics. All of this was possible thanks to the work of Shino, but I can't stress this enough. Over the next few weeks and months, this industry, AI, machine learning, and large language models, will progress at an exponential pace. The version we have, which is, as of right now, pretty much on the cutting edge of AI development, was trained by feeding a couple of text reviews into the model, which then spat out all sorts of tweets. 
But the functionality we are seeing emerge with GPT-4 based replies, conversations, and advanced learning will make it so that anyone can have a fully automated social media troll or white knight defender or super fan that will actively sit day in and day out, no human involved, interacting with whatever community you choose. For clarity, we could have pushed this even further by seeding the long-term memory of the agent, prompting it differently and coding more functions into the bot like selective replies to only negative posts, making it a dedicated superfan, or only positive posts, making it a dedicated troll. But the point is, rather than sit here and tell everyone, this bad thing can happen because I said so, trust me, we just proved it. In other words, Parrot Analytics is measuring demand through an arbitrary new list of metrics, including social media engagement. After less than one day of work, well, more than one day, it was drawn out over a few days, but collectively less than one day of work, we were able to construct an automated posting bot that avoids duplicate content, randomizes tone, inserts alternate examples, is rapidly approaching a level of authenticity that makes it indistinguishable from an actual human, and it's just the beginning. Here's an example of the automated tweets that it can think up and spit out on its own while running, which it did do because I spun it up and let it run on its own. The show Velma, while entertaining, highlights the dehumanizing effects of media on society in line with Marshall McLuhan's The Medium is the Message. Hashtag Velma, sociology, media influence. How about this one? Velma is the worst show I've ever seen. It doesn't hold a candle to excellent shows like Game of Thrones or Breaking Bad. Hashtag Velma, Game of Thrones, Breaking Bad. Yet another tone on this one, Velma's clear intent to separate itself from other iterations of the characters makes it lose the key essence of what makes Velma Velma. Hashtag Velma show, TV opinions. End quote. And the list goes on. Obviously, these are critical, but this bot never watched the program, never really had any skin in the game, yet somehow, because of Parrot Analytics, is being counted or interpreted as demand, thereby dictating what type of content that Hollywood produces. It's insane. These bots will have a measurable impact on the industry, which means a measurable impact on what shows get made or renewed. It cost me less than a dollar to send dozens of tweets with dozens of unique hashtags, all from an auto GPT agent that will be 10 times more advanced in like probably under a couple weeks or a month and is now available publicly via GitHub to the point where anyone with a computer can start to exert influence over this process. Parrot Analytics is choosing to embrace new standards, big air quotes there, new standards when it comes to gathering data and Hollywood has decided to listen to those standards. As a result, television programs and streaming service productions are getting worse. They will continue to get worse, they will get worse at greater and greater speeds, and all of us are simply along for the ride because rather than judging entertainment by way of its legitimate success, watch time, viewership, etc., Hollywood is judging it based on demand. And demand, as you can see, is about to be overrun with machine learning, undetectable bot traffic, and spam from people who probably didn't even watch the show, or auto agents, that bots that they're tasking and they didn't see it themselves. They're just doing it to spike demand. As proof, I didn't finish Velma. I watched two episodes, and now I have on my computer an AI that can spike the demand metrics for me 24-7. At will, for pennies. <laughs> awesome. It's not perfect. It gets stuck sometimes, actually often. You can't really task it too far ahead, and you do have to give it feedback sometimes, but when you get it in the right cycle, and it starts to post and listen to the rules that you dictate, it really can run on its own and just spit out a whole bunch of tweets about Velma in a certain tone. Or you can vary the tone too. I mean, it's it's incredible stuff. It's really bleeding edge and it's not perfect and there's a lot of errors and a lot of issues and you're gonna have to do a lot of troubleshooting, but yeah, it's linked down below. Feel free to check it out. The truth of the matter is that Elon Musk is not defeating the spam bots or eradicating the fake accounts. He's really just monetizing them. In a way, I guess I can respect it, make money where money can be made, that whole thing, but the world of Twitter is not what it seems right now. Be careful. Final thing, this video concept was largely discovered and initially talked about three weeks ago by a channel named Disparu, who does incredible work by the way. Aside from raw subject, our content has been entirely different, so I do still feel confident covering it, but it's important for me that good concepts and great channels receive all the recognition that they rightfully deserve. So I'll have his channel linked down below in the description and encourage anyone interested in movies, television, gaming, and pop culture to go check him out. That's it. If you want to support, there are links down below, merch, social media, YouTube alternatives, also locals and Patreon for a monthly subscription. Please do consider checking those links. There are less videos lately because they're taking quite a bit more time, effort, and money to produce, so hopefully it's worth it. But yeah, I'll cut it there and stop rambling. Thank you for watching, and have a nice night.